Now, developing news from KXAN News. A wildfire still burning out of control in Burnett County. Thanks for joining us here on the CW9. This thing is forcing hundreds out of their homes. Plus, about 250 people had to evacuate from Inks Lake State Park. Look at this amazing viewer video that's coming into us from all different angles of this fire. You can see smoke just taking over the sky. Also, some large flames in some of this video. Also, helicopter crews trying to help get a handle on this, doing water drop after water drop. Here's another angle. Caleb, thank you for sending this to us. This video is from Inks Lake giving us another really good view of those flames. And check out this viewer video giving us a better size of the idea, or a better idea of the size rather. We're going to get to the latest stats on that in just a few seconds. Daniel Adams sending in this picture. He captured an incredible photo here of this helicopter dropping that Bambi bucket down into the water to do yet another water drop. Thank you so much for all of these pictures. One more. We want to show you another viewer video of the air fight on this massive fire. We are hearing at least four single engine tankers in addition to the helicopters are out there helping. Something officials say is key. Our Alyssa Gord starts our live team coverage. She's at the Burnett Community Center right now where Alyssa, you're getting new information on how uh, firefighters are trying to protect these homes. That's right, Aaron. Let's go over the details first, and we've actually heard them uh, just earlier this hour from the Texas A&M Forest Service, who came here to the Burnett Community Center to debrief with some local officials. The fire, what they say, has spread over 500 acres during the course of the day today. But the latest update, again, we heard earlier this hour, is that it is 5% contained and that it has stopped making forward progress, which means the fire is not actively growing. Now, another thing that's important to note is this fire did happen on state park land right here at the community center. What we heard from the county judge is that many of the folks who are here are actually not residents of Burnett or Burnett County, but are people who were staying at the state park. You can see the parking lot over here is full. Many of the cars, you can see their trunks are full of, of gear that looks like they were out camping. There are plenty of cars that have roof racks and bike racks. Um, folks who were staying there and weren't expecting to have to leave wound up having to come to this community center. At this point, the county judge says there are around 40 or 50 people who are staying here right now. Now, it's important to note that this evacuation area is a precautionary measure. There is no structural damage or people hurt by this fire that we know of. This fire is pretty much contained to Inks Lake State Parkland area, but not the campsite area. The campsite was close to the fire, which is why those evacuations were ordered. This fire is a little bit different just because of its proximity to uh, uh, high populations. So we've had fires all across the region. A lot of them um, have been a little more rural. So this one being right next to the state park, right next to some camps, um, a little bit different than the other ones last week. I want to be very clear that the campsite area has been spared thus far. There's a bunch of resources there uh, that are uh, protecting it and protecting any other structures that are in the area. And the Texas A&M Forest Service says that there were around 400 people, again, that's an updated number that we just heard, around 400 people who were evacuated from that state parkland area. In addition to that, there was a voluntary evacuation over at Camp Longhorn, where around 800 kids were part of that voluntary evacuation, again, as a precautionary measure over in that area. And this community center here, it'll stay open the whole night and into the future as it's needed. Now, the judge says he doesn't expect that it'll be needed again tomorrow, but we'll take this hour by hour. For now, our own Arzo Dost is live overlooking the lake right now. Arzo has been talking with families over there who say they're ready to evacuate. Arzo. And Alyssa, we're just on the other side of this massive brush fire. You can't really see the smoke from here, but look at those flames. Really, as the sun has gone down, you get a better perspective. That's right across Inks Lake, and this is near Camp Longhorn. You've been able to see thick smoke off and all, all evening, and then there's the hot spots that flare up, and across the lake, you see the flames. There have been water drops for hours. Firefighters will be working on one area, and then within seconds, you see them jumping to another spot. 
The evacuations are from around Ink Lake State Park, as we mentioned. Deputies are blocking entrances so no one can get in. On our way here, we came across families who had minutes to evacuate, many just grabbing their kids and pets and getting out. This is what's going on in their minds tonight. That we're fixing to lose everything that we've worked our whole lives to have. Just praying for the best, hoping everybody got out. There were embers coming across the lake when, we, when that wind switched directions when I first got down here, so it was a little scary. Now, one of now, one of the neighborhoods that was evacuated, Deer Springs, we've just been told that that neighborhood is back open. If families want to go back to their homes, there are several others that are still closed off and deputies are still remaining there, keeping those roads closed. Meantime, across the lake, the families who live around here where we're standing, they've been told to keep a close eye on what's going on, especially through tonight and be ready to evacuate. Live in Bernard County, Arzo Dos, KXAN News. Thank you so much, Arzo. And the Hill Country can't catch a break with these wildfires this month. But this fire tonight is much different because it's forcing families from their homes, something we haven't seen over the past few weeks when the wildfires swept through earlier this month in Burnett, Blanco, and Llano counties. They were large, uh, though, burning a couple thousand acres combined, but all were on ranch land. The biggest fire was out in Llano County. Estimates from the Texas Forest Service uh, say it was 1,200 acres and lasted more than a week. Rosie here with us now to talk about the conditions which play such a huge role in trying to fight these fires. And originally, Erin, we had a couple of conditions working against us, but the one positive that we had is that winds are light, which makes it easier for firefighters to do their jobs. Unfortunately, with the latest update that we're getting out of Burnett, those winds have started to pick mm. up. So here's a latest look at current conditions. This is the closest location. It's Craddock Field out at the uh, Burnett Municipal Airport. 97 degrees even at this time of the evening. Humidity starting to rise now that we're past our warmest hour of the day. But look at these winds. They've been 5 to 10 miles per hour. They still are out of the southeast, which means the fire is growing to the northwest. And unfortunately, those wind gusts now are up to 16 miles per hour. And because we've seen this pattern over and over again, it's possible that we could have some higher wind gusts in the overnight hours. I'm hoping that it will stay to a minimum, but this is just a pattern that we've been continuing to see. So hopefully the firefighters can be out there doing the best they can as those temperatures start to uh, climb down this evening. And at least the humidity will start to slowly climb up. So maybe it will allay some of the factors that we have out there for wildfires.